After you have successfully installed Ventas, you will find a new Ventas technology folder in your Windows Start menu. Inside this folder, you will find a list of applications and other utilities that could be launched depending on your license version. For this tutorial, we will be focusing on Ventus Designer, which is our design and authoring solution. Ventus Designer is available as a standalone product, and it is also included as standard for all editions of Ventus Studio. After you launch Designer or any other Ventus application for the first time, the Ventus License Manager will open asking for your license. Using the License Manager, you can see a list of your available licenses and ongoing maintenance status. If you already have a Community, Core, or PLE license that uses online verification, you will need to enter your information, including your license key that would have been received via email. If you do not yet have a Ventus license, you will need to visit our website to request one. If you are using a dongle-based license for your Core or Enterprise product, all you need to do is plug the dongle into a USB port on your computer. After the dongle is read and the license data retrieved, the information will be updated and will appear in the License Manager. After you have confirmed your license, online or dongle-based, you are ready to start using Ventas. You can check out a more detailed guide on how to install and troubleshoot your licenses in our user manual. Please check the link in the video description below for more information. Each time you launch Ventus Designer, the Project Browser window will open, which is used to create new projects or load any existing project. Ventus content is organized by projects, and each project can contain multiple scenes. There is a checkbox at the bottom of the project browser that when toggled will show sample projects that are available online to download. Inexperienced users are recommended to keep this option enabled to gain access to demo projects that will help when first learning Ventus. You will notice that the content browser organizes projects by categories. Categories can be created when setting up a new project. You can also edit the category of an existing project by right-clicking on it and opening its properties or by selecting the project and clicking on the settings button. This is a useful way to help keep your list of projects organized. In addition to the list of available projects, you are also able to create new projects using the content browser. This is done by selecting Create New Project, which is located under the Recent Projects tab. When creating a new project, you are required to enter a project name and select a folder location where the new folder structure for the project will be created. You are also able to enter optional information such as author and copyright information, a brief description, how you would like to categorize your project, the default resolution, or assign a custom icon. After creating a new Ventus project, the designer interface will open and you will be presented with a new empty scene. You can check for a more detailed description of Ventus projects and scenes in our user manual. Check the link in the video description below. Ventus Designer is organized into different interface layouts that are all fully customizable. The default interface is the logic view, and this is most useful for when you are first building a new Ventus scene. Each interface is made up of different windows that can all be freely moved around and docked wherever you would like. Each window by default will contain a different view, and each view serves a unique purpose. If you've built a workspace that you like, you can save it by accessing the view dropdown in the top ribbon of the application. Saved workspaces can even be exported to be used with any other installation of Ventus Designer. In addition to saving and loading workspaces, the view dropdown is also where you can show and hide the different views that can be used to customize your workspace, manage repositories, and most importantly, toggle between light and dark color themes. Ventus Designer has four different default layouts. Design, which prioritizes the final rendered output. Logic, which is meant for creating your scene structure and graphics logic. Animate, which features the animation editor used to create all of your animated content, and data, which is used to streamline the creation of connections to external data and exposing data for easy scene control. You can switch freely between these layouts and edit each of them to meet your own personal needs. Also, your scenes will always load with whatever window layout you're using the last time it was saved. As mentioned earlier, all the workspaces and layouts in Ventus are made up from the different views available from the view dropdown menu. You can easily see which views are being used by the current workspace by checking for an orange outline around the icon for each view when you open the dropdown. Let's begin by describing the most important Ventus view windows and their purpose. We will not be covering all available views in this tutorial, however, you can always check back for later tutorials or check out our online user manual for more information. The Render view is the most important view in Ventus Designer and is always shown no matter which workspace you are using. The Render view is the window that displays your real-time graphics. 
Along the top of the user interface, right below the different layout buttons, you will find the controls used to toggle the various render view tools and modes. The icons for the render view controls are grouped into two sections. The first group modify the render view and provide you with the tools to help troubleshoot a project. The second half of tools enable the manipulation of objects directly inside of the render view. The first icon included as a part of these render controls toggles wireframe mode. Clicking this button will either render the geometry in your scene as a solid or as wireframe. The next icon is to toggle the on-screen performance statistics. This is an invaluable tool when generating real-time graphics. It is super helpful for when building a project to ensure everything is running smoothly and reliably. There are several different performance metrics you can toggle by clicking the small arrow next to the icon to open the configuration dropdown. The third icon toggles the display of the on-screen input diagnostics. This provides the render view with an overlay for visually tracking interaction and multi-touch input. Next is the button that toggles bounding boxes. When this option is enabled and an object is selected in the hierarchy, you will see a visual representation of its bounding box in the render view. The fifth button is Show Key. This will show or hide the alpha channel of the rendered output. Next is the full screen button. Pressing this will maximize the render view to occupy the entire screen or return it to its original location. The next set of icons about to be described are all related to interacting directly with objects in the render window. The first icon in this set is the In Render Edit Mode button. Toggling this control allows you to interact with objects directly within the render view window. This control can also be enabled or disabled by pressing the tab button on your keyboard. When In Render Edit Mode has been enabled, the icon as well as the render viewport will both be outlined in orange. Next is the Show Non-Render Objects toggle. This will show or hide any objects in your scene that would normally not be included in the render view, such as lights or cameras. Next is the Object Aligned, Property Aligned button. This button changes the gizmo alignment behavior. The next three icons are only available for use when the In Render or Edit mode has been enabled. First is Translate. When enabled, the translation gizmo will be made visible in the render viewport and can be used to move objects around your scene by dragging the handles. The Translate gizmo can also be toggled by pressing T on your keyboard. Next is Rotate. This button is used to make the rotation gizmo appear so that you can rotate objects in your render window by dragging on the gizmo handles. You can also toggle the rotate gizmo by pressing the R button on your keyboard. Finally, we have scale. This enables the use of the scale gizmo so that you can make objects larger or smaller from inside of the render window. Scale can also be toggled by pressing the L button on your keyboard. Additionally, by enabling in render or edit mode, you also enable the use of the free flight camera. The free flight camera is controlled by holding down the right mouse button and using the WSAD keys and mouse to fly around the scene. This control scheme should feel familiar to anyone with experience using other 3D software packages or playing PC games. Remember, the in render edit mode and free flight camera control can both be quickly toggled by pressing the tab key on your keyboard. If you forget how to move around the viewport, you can easily refer to the controls on screen display by pressing the divide key or forward slash on your numeric keypad. For more detailed information about the different features of the render window, please refer to the link in the user manual in the description below. On the far left side of the user interface, you will find the layers editor. This is where you create all the 2D and 3D layers that will become a part of your scene. You can control some of the layer properties directly from within the layer editor, such as space transformations, opacity, blending modes, and post-processing effects. Whenever you create a new 3D layer, a hierarchy of nodes is created that will make up your 3D world. This is where hierarchy nodes will establish your scene structure and dependencies for any 3D objects or other elements such as materials, lights, or cameras. And the hierarchy editor is where you edit these nodes. In addition to the hierarchy nodes, there are content nodes. Content nodes will often only be shown contextually depending on which layers or hierarchy nodes are currently selected. These are the nodes that you will use to build your scene logic. An important view which is directly related to the hierarchy editor and content editor is the toolbox. The toolbox is the view window that has a collection of all of the content and hierarchy nodes available in Ventas, which are organized into different categories. An easy way to tell the difference between hierarchy and content nodes are the brackets around their icons. Hierarchy nodes can be identified by their brackets being on the sides of the icon, and the content nodes can be identified by their brackets being on the top and bottom of the icon. Everything in Ventus can essentially be broken down into raw data. 
all nodes can be looked at as data transforming tools that take input data, process it, and then output it again. Whenever you select a layer or node in Designer, its data values are displayed in the Properties view. The Properties view window has controls that allow you to customize whether you want to see the input or output properties or both. The Animation Editor is another important Ventus view, which appears by default when you select the Animate workspace. The Animation Editor is used to create and edit your animations, and it can display this information in several different ways. The Time View is like a timeline you'd expect to see in something like After Effects or other 3D animation software. In this view, the keyframes are displayed as points and the transitions are just bars, so you won't have fine control over acceleration, just the ability to edit time and value changes. The Diagram View will represent the same animations in a more traditional Animation Curves view with Bezier handles for fine control of acceleration and how values transition in between different keyframes. The Animation Editor also features a Logic View, which is used primarily when working with the powerful Ventus State Machine. And the Data View, used to control when new data is applied in your animation. However, these are more advanced topics that will be covered thoroughly in future tutorials. The Stage Editor is a view that allows you to easily swap between all the different output layouts that you have previously created using the Ventus Configuration Editor. This allows you to test different multi-output configurations or even multi-machine setups with ease. The remainder of the available view windows are very specific for certain tasks or workflows, which will be explained further in future videos. For additional information on the designer interface, please check the link in the video description below.